You know the three. It goes Sag, you know your big Sag, three? Libra. Get the You're a Sag, Sun, Sag, Moon, Libra rising? I'm a Sag, Sun, Sag, Moon, Libra rising. Really? Am I the only one who's questioning why we needed to see Michael have his heart broken and the fact that he says he doesn't know where the marriage is for him? Why would the producers do this at his expense? At the same time, they gave him a good edit. So I hope this is enough to find him someone. I hope someone will watch this and say, oh God, I really like this man. I want to give it a shot with him and he will find his life partner. And also, um, of the two couples that got married. I have high hopes for Orion and Lauren. I really like them. I like their connection. Uh, Bianca and Austin seem amazing as well, but I don't know. You know, people at times either are very good at their wedding and then they start to play up or they're very bad at their wedding and then they grow on each other. So I can't wait. Anyway, I digress. Hey there, it's Valerie. Welcome back. I'm so sorry about the late review. I've been working and at times work is just work anyway in this episode i'll be reviewing married at first sight season 17 episode 2 if you're new here don't forget to subscribe we're almost at 1000 guys come on let's keep going click the like button turn on the notification bell for when i upload new videos leave a comment and share the video so we it's still a continuation of emily and brennan's wedding because you know they've now been pronounced husband and wife they seem happy with the look of each other but for me i get nervous when i hear people say i've never been in a relationship and when somebody else says you know uh there is no room for divorce that makes me very nervous because you're dealing with someone who's never been in a relationship who doesn't know what it means to be in a relationship so the idea that you'd expect them to commit to you for life is a bit unrealistic Let's try and see if they are prepared to be in a relationship in the first place before you you know you go on to think about being in it for life but hey I assume that means they're both committed to the process and they're going to put in the work. They seem very happy and very excited. Uh, obviously, Brennan lets uh, Emily know that he's, he's, he's fully Russian. Both his parents are Russian. And I don't know. I don't know how that will play out, though, because it seems like it could be very a very good combination or they could be very toxic. So it's just a matter of time, uh, just a matter of waiting to see what happens with the two of them. But, I, you know, I root for love, so we'll see. So Becca and Austin go suit and dress shopping. And for me, I am, they seem like a good match, but I'm also nervous because of Becca's history. She's got a history of endometriosis. So she's recently had an append appendicectomy. And um, so she's recovering from that. And so because of her medical history, I don't know whether Austin is aware of this before he marries her because he's taking on a lot because endometriosis is no joke. And so because someone is going to be in pain a lot and you're going to be there to support them and you're going to be there, you know, just to take care of them. And so I don't know whether he's aware of this. Um they both seem very goofy they both are sort of looking more or less the same thing in what they wear their lifestyles seem to sort of align i think the only problem will come with the medical history and whether austin has the capacity to cope with that but do i think they're a good match i think so i think so although um I don't know. We'll see. We'll see once they get married. Because with most people, they're excited at their wedding or they're unhappy or their honeymoon. And after the honeymoon is where you start to actually see how well they gel. So we'll, I'll wait and see. But they do have the potential to be a successful couple. As long as Austin is on board with the endometriosis, I think they should be fine. Uh, because he might have to be her carer at some point. So as long as he's on board with that, I don't see any problem with the two of them. The only problem as well is, is he seems like he's a very adventurous person. So if um, Becca is not feeling well, will he still be able to explore that? Or with whatever she's going through now, will he still be able to explore that and take his wife along to enjoy it? I'm not saying people uh, with endometriosis are confined indoors and they don't do anything, but I think he will have to make a lot of adjustments and I don't know whether he's ready for that, but we'll see how he plays out. The experts must have taken that into consideration or they must have asked him questions that sort of implied that he has the capacity to deal with that. So we'll see. 
Next up is Claire and Cameron. They go for their suit and dress shopping. And Cameron brings his family friend, the wife. And it's sad because he says his parents are back in New Zealand. It seems he immigrated to America uh, years ago, opened up his shop, and he seems to be doing very well. And he's looking for a life partner. Cameron comes across as very mellow, as very sort of calm and very sort of reserved and i think he will be the best person for claire because claire we know is a quadruplet she lost her brother he committed suicide sadly um and so she's dress shopping with her mom her two uh, sisters and her two aunts and they all seem very emotional for her i think because she's been through a lot she's been looking for a life partner and has struggled to really find someone to take her seriously so she's really looking forward to this experiment and i hope if nothing else, I hope they don't both go in with, oh, I have a type. I think if they both go in with the idea that I really want to get married, I'm looking for a life partner, and whoever they match me up with, I'm going to do the work. I can see them working. I really can see. Because I think she's a social worker, if I'm not mistaken. And he seems very patient and very sort of adventurous and very committed. Because immigration, immigrating to a different country is not easy. To then set up a business and, you know to work to be someone who's accomplished it takes a lot it takes a lot i'm not saying it doesn't take a lot for for people that have not immigrated but i'm just saying it does take a lot to sort of have that commitment and that drive um i don't know oh next wedding is orion and lauren I like them as individuals. I really do. And so seeing how they're both very spiritual, I think my concern was the fact that Lauren is bisexual and I didn't know how Orion would accept that. He did say he was open and he did say he did have a man kiss him and he realized that nah he's not for men he's just for women because he always wondered whether he was bi curious or whatever and so seeing them prepare their wedding and seeing the gifts that they gave one another is so cute i think they could actually work i think the fact that they're both very spiritual people people who are rooted within their culture and want someone who's going to accept their culture and accept them for who they are i feel like this could work it's cute to see that lauren has her whole family and her bridesmaids sort of wearing the same color they're all very supportive her sister-in-law was there to give her gifts before the wedding and they seem to have a very close bond her dad and her brother walked her down the aisle. It was amazing seeing Orion and his mom. It seems like they're very family orientated people, people who are very rooted in their culture and want to respect their culture and honor it throughout their relationship with whoever they marry. So I, I have high hopes for them and I really wish them the best. One thing I always look for in marriage at first sight is the couple's first reaction when they see each other, you know, when the groom sees the bride walking down the aisle and seeing how Michael reacted to Lauren when she walked down. Oh, you can tell he was excited. Even Lauren herself, she was excited. I think they both knew that they were marrying someone who was into culture, but they didn't know what sort of ethnic group the person was coming from. So seeing each other, well, Orion had an upper hand because he got to see her family and saw everyone was black. So he knew he was marrying a black lady. But for, you know, Lauren to see him and then to hear their vows to one another and to hear how their families described them, it sort of aligned. It was as though these people knew each other from, you know, a past life. And they were both ecstatic because they felt the experts have really done them well because they had matched them with what they were looking for. I love their kiss, their first kiss. You could see how excited they were. I'm a bit concerned about Orion's sister's face, the, the way she looked, whether she was nervous or anxious or she couldn't quite understand what was going on. But I have high hopes for them. I really like them as a couple. And I think they possess, you know, what it takes to be a successful marriage. They remind me of... Um, Brianna and Vincent in how they reacted on first sight and the moment Brianna met Vincent by the time she got to her reception she was already saying you know this is it I'm going to change my surname to his name and I'm happy and I hope they work I really hope they work
Next up is Michael and Mystery Woman. I know somebody on Twitter sent me a link or sent me a clip, an article of the person he was supposed to get married to. And Mavs is shady. Or I think it's a good thing. They didn't even show the lady or show her family. They cut them all out and just showed Michael. I don't know why they went ahead with this wedding unless the lady later changed her mind and decided to marry, you know, Michael. I don't know why. Uh, the fact that she gave him a gift, she gave him a sword and a crown and his friends were ecstatic for him. I I really wonder why she 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 walked up to the altar. I know pe there's been this conspiracy that, oh, maybe Mavs did it for ratings. I don't think so. I think it's someone who signed on to the experiment, wanted to get married, and then at the last minute had cold feet and turned around and ran away. Whether she knew Michael or whatever happened, I wish we knew why she said no that's more my reason that's what i want to find out is why did she say no at the last minute it seems because she had already given him a gift if she didn't plan on getting married to him she wouldn't have given him a gift unless his gift put her off or unless he at first sight put her off and she decided no i'm not signing up for this i really am curious as to why why she turned around and said no so Michael's bride walks up the altar and then looks at him and says, well, I'm sorry, I don't want to marry a stranger. And it's like, you knew until you walked up the altar that you were marrying a stranger. Why did you not break it off before then? When the experts came to tell you you were marrying a stranger, you said yes. When you went bridal dress shopping, you said you knew you were shopping to go and get married to a stranger. Why would you wait to embarrass him in front of his family? Did the producers convince her to walk up the aisle and tell him no? I don't get that. I think it was very selfish. I think it was very mean-spirited. It's even worse than that I'm a good person because how dare she give him a gift and give him hope and then later or uh, stand up at the altar and tell him, I don't want to marry a stranger. Why? And Michael was very calm and he said, I understand and it's okay. You can choose yourself. But I didn't like it. I didn't like it. Whether they did it for ratings or whatever, it left a bad taste in my personal mouth. I didn't like that because it's sad that they had to disgrace him that much because it's it's not fair on Michael, really. It's not fair. Giving him hope and the fact that he actually took the crown and the sword to the wedding and was excited, was wearing it. I love the fact that his family were very supportive and ran to sort of surround him and sort of comfort him at, you know, one of the hardest points in his life. And this will leave him traumatized for a long time and he'll need a lot of therapy before he can decide to marry anybody else. Sad. Next up is Becca and Austin. I think Becca and Austin are the wild card, in my opinion. I'm going to say that in the sense that they could either work or they could actually crumble. But... I have an idea that I think Becca has really put a lot of thought into this because she says she's a wedding planner. Uh, so she is, it seems, very serious about getting married. She has the same anxiety as me in the sense that how is Austin going to take on board the fact that, you know, she she does suffer from ill health? Will he be on board with that? And will he be willing to stand by her side? Because it seems like he's marrying her. It's supposed to be in secret in sickness and in health and he's marrying her in sickness so will you stick around for the healthy part that's the problem and his mum has suddenly come around i'd forgotten that she was really not happy about this process but it seems you know she has a conversation with him before he walks down the aisle to tell him that she's now on board she understands he's a grown man and she cannot make his choices for him he has to make his own choices as he is the one who's going to live with them so she's on board with that so so, I don't know. We'll see. It's uh, Married at first sight, it's very rare you see the tension at the wedding. It's only once people have said the vows that you, that you start to see the cracks. Oh, it's cute to see because Becca has a conversation with her mom and fr and friends before she walks down the aisle uh, with Austin. He's asked his friend to be his, you know, his flower girl. And the friend really takes it to heart and really is serious about his role. It was cute. Um, and to see Austin's reaction when he saw his bride was amazing. The way he cried and Becca had to run around looking for the tissue. I thought, what's going on? Does he have a booger? But, you know, she was helping him dry his tears. Um, it seems they have a lot of things in common. They're both always late. Their sense of humor, I think they feed off one another. They like to play the same games. Um, and so it was cute to see how, you know, 
they really seemed to gel very well and how ecstatic Beckup was you know when she walked down the aisle and she wanted to hug everyone and so hearing them sort of recite their vows and and kiss everyone has really gone in for the kiss it's not you know kiss me on the cheek like Kristen last season everybody's really gone in so I I think I have hopes for them. I think I have hopes for them. I think my I'm still concerned about the fact of the ill of the medical history, but I I have hope. I have hope that you know he will Austin will be open minded and he will be accepting of the fact that you know uh, Becca comes with this medical history. Oh, we get to see Michael and the support system. I like his friends, whether they're just his friends or his brothers or whoever they are. Because they say we are really upset for you because she went through this whole process, as I said, knowing that she wasn't all in. The moment she knew she wasn't going to do it, she should have said so. Instead of waiting until you're standing up at the altar to humiliate you. Because now Michael is thinking, is marriage still for me or is it something that I just need to accept that it's not for me? This man was ready for marriage. He was ready to do the work. He was willing to change and to grow with his wife, which is a lot of things that people like Kirsten would have given her left leg just to be married to someone like Michael, I think, because he was open to change. He was open to growing. He was opening to learning from his partner. And so for his wife not to be moved, as Michael said, by seeing him standing at the altar to decide to go ahead with the wedding is heartbreaking. And I really feel sorry for him. And I hope if nothing else, this opens up the opportunity for him to find the love of his life. I'm hoping that he, you know, someone will see this and reach out and hopefully will have a connection with him and will be his life partner that he was looking for. Oh, I'm so sad for Michael, really. Oh, Lauren and uh, Orion are oh, cute, 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 cute. Oh my God. So they sit them down and they sort of having a conversation about what they were looking for in a partner. And one of the things that Orion wanted was someone who's inquisitive, someone who wants to learn about his culture, wants to learn about him. And the fact that, you know, uh, during their conversation, Lauren was able to ask about his bun and he was able to explain that. And she really appreciated that. She, she, she sort of, had some respect and understanding in how she received it was good obviously there's the age gap 27 and 31 the experts have done this a lot they've done this for Shanice and Jeff too who are still married I think they celebrated their sixth anniversary this year they've done this for Karen and Miles sadly they are divorced they've also done it for who else have they done it for but the couples have continued to grow even though the wife was older so if nothing else I hope Orion and uh, Lauren, they both say they are in this for the long haul. They're willing to put in the work. So I hope they are, you know, open to growing as a couple and they really dig deep like Jeff and Shanice and really fight for their marriage. And hopefully they will be a success. I love them. I love how they really seem to have this understanding, this emotional connection. The fact that they share the same star sign really made them happy as well. So that was cute to see. Lastly, it's Claire and Cameron. And am I the only one who is nervous in the sense that we have not seen Cameron's family? He keeps saying his family is in New Zealand. At least if he had FaceTimed them or Skyped them and we had got an opportunity to see them and see what they think about the wedding, I thought they weren't there at the announcement they would be there at the wedding. But it seems they're not even attending the wedding. And it's like, make it make sense. What are we missing? Why are they... Are they people who just don't want to be on camera or do they not think this is serious and they're waiting until after the wedding and after, you know, decision day to sort of meet the bride, make it make sense? That to me didn't make sense. I like the fact that he had, you know, his family friends there. He had his cousin there. And so they were very supportive of him. He comes across as a great guy, but he seems very nervous. And it makes me worry. It makes me worry. Obviously, he he sent her a stuffed animal. She didn't understand that because he said it's kiwi. And, and most people know that New Zealand people are known as kiwis. So I don't understand why she couldn't sort of compute that. And she kept sort of questioning, why did he give me this? Why did he give me this? He also implied that, you know, it, it came by boat. So that would mean an you know an exploration of some sort why did she not sort of stop and think oh, 
I didn't get that. Obviously, Claire was telling her family that you need to be patient with him. You need to be understanding. It seems that her family is very picky and have judged her previous partners very harshly. So she is concerned about that. And she's concerned about how they'll feel about Cameron. I am nervous for Cameron and uh, Claire. They could either work or they could either fall apart. And so I'll... I'll wait to see their first impressions next week when they meet up to see how they react and whether there's any flicker there to say that these two have a connection of some sort and are going to put in the work to survive, you know, this experiment because it is quite an intense experience to go through this process of being married to someone and not only that, having producers, cameramen and everybody else around you all the time. So, um... It was great to see some of the weddings. I really enjoyed the weddings today. They all seemed, you know, cute. I'm not happy with the clip for the promo for next week because it seems the families are going to cause drama. I don't know why every season. You have to have a family member who acts out. You had Claire's sister who was acting out and saying, I wasn't for this idea. And it's like, leave it. You're at the wedding. Just support her and stand beside her. And that's it. Um, I can't wait till next week. We'll see what happens. Thanks guys for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe and click the link um, in my video to watch my review from episode one. Bye guys.